Dixie, hi. Well, you, you are hard to reach. I'm calling this number. I've left messages. Yeah, honey, I know. I'm sorry. I meant to call you, but 50 things happen at once. And now, unfortunately, I'm late for my third meeting of the day. It's not even lunch yet. Um, I'm, I guess I'm just gonna have to call you back later. Look, I know how important you are out there and busy, but this can't wait. Dixie, it really is bad luck to be late for three meetings in one day. Tad, I have to know the creature, your boss, Liza Colby, what's she up to? What's Liza done now? Well, she faxed a memo yesterday. I, I just noticed it. And on it was a list of uh, possible new topics for shows. One of them being necrophiliacs, sex pits of Bangkok, mothers who maim. <laughs> and uh, number four, local angle, gay teachers. And on it was this little personal note. Uh, Tad, still working on this one. Buffo potential. Mike Delaney? Question mark, question mark. Did you hear me? Dixie, what's the problem? Using a friend's personal misfortune to exploit him is not a problem? Michael Delaney is a grown man. He knows what television's about. He can always say no. Look, honey, why don't you just... stay away from the fax machine if it's gonna upset you so much, okay? Tad, the machine doesn't upset me, honey. You do. I mean, Liza's... <laughs> Practically swinging an axe at one of our best friends, and, and, and that's okay with you? What do you want me to do? The gay rights issue is good television. Besides, there's a big, bigger issue at stake here. It's called freedom. People's attitudes aren't going to change unless the message gets out. <laughs> right, change attitudes about uh, necrophilia. Dixie, I'd much rather go to my meeting without fighting with you, okay? Tad Liza doesn't care about gay rights, okay? All she cares about is ratings. Sorry, Tad. Yeah. Lady over there would like an autograph. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Hang on. What's her name? Lucille Pinkston. Okay. Be right there, Dixie. Are you giving somebody an autograph? Yep. <laughs> what the hell? I guess it just goes with the job. And there we go. Listen, honey, we'll talk about this uh, after I get home, okay? Oh, gee, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, honey, to be interrupting you while you're working on your Q score. Excuse me. Look, Dixie, I've explained I'm running late. And whether you like it or not, the cutting edge with Tad Martin is a hit. Personally, it ticks me off that you think that's something to be ashamed of. Are you saying you think I don't understand you? Don't do this. Because I know what you're like when you feel misunderstood. I know who you turn to. But for Pete's sake, Dixie, I'm here by myself. Right, I'm sorry, um... I really shouldn't be bringing this up while we're on the phone and you're so busy. Um, especially with all your fans around. When will you be home? Tomorrow late. Fine. Can I go to my meeting now? Well, it might be nice if you asked about your kids, considering they miss you. Okay, Dixie. Have it your way. I'm a pathetic father as well as a lousy husband. And in general, a creep with no morals. Thanks for the pep talk. See you when I get back tomorrow. Tad, book me on a flight back to the East as soon as possible, okay? Thank you. Flying home to the little woman? Nope. At least, not the wife. Michael, we are behind you 100%. Your private life has no place in the workplace. The school board was wrong pulling you out of that classroom. I mean, discrimination is discrimination, no matter who it's against. And the cutting edge with Tad Martin would like to join your fight. Like you joined the fight for victims' rights, right? Well, that show veered out of control. I mean, we're not perfect. Our heart was in the right place, though. Look, I'm sure you leave no stone unturned in your never-ending quest for political correctness, but let's face it. You're in the business to sell advertisers' products, not fight for gay rights. But the two are far from mutually exclusive. I mean, we are in the business to enliven, to educate, to entertain the American audience while we make a buck for the station and the advertisers. It's called public service. It's called trash TV. You know, I'm really surprised you would pin a negative label on something you're about as familiar with as I am gay rights. 
I mean, we are a young, hip, hard-working show with integrity. We have a mission. We also have millions of viewers, all of whom you can reach out and touch with your message. What message? I, uh, I think globally, act locally. Uh, all humans are created equal. I mean, anything you want. We appreciate the, the position that you're in, and we have research. Jason? Homophobia and its impact on society, gays in the military, health care benefits for same-sex couples. You actually read these reports? More hate crimes were committed in 1995, especially against gays, than in any other year, and are expected to rise. Michael, uh, Jason has something that he'd also like to say to you. No, I think Jason's already said to me what he has to say. Jason? I apologize for my offensive behavior the other day, Mr. Delaney. I was way out of line. Apology accepted. I hope you understand the comments that came from our hot-headed intern, our his and his alone. You can ask your friend Rudy about WRCW. We are an equal opportunity workplace. We welcome everyone, and we'd like to welcome you as a guest on Michael? The Cutting Edge. Hello, Dixie. Well, think about it privately and talk to me later. You move fast. Michael, don't do it. She'll cream you. Say no. It's sweet of you to be concerned about Michael, Dixie, but his decision is not your call. No, you're absolutely right, Liza. It's not her decision. It's not your decision. It's not Jason's. It's mine. Of course it is. But if you let her talk you into it, she'll find some way to sensationalize Dixie, the Dixie, whole thing for ratings. I can handle this, all right? Real debate about real issues, Dixie, is not sensationalism. It's freedom at work in a democracy. Oh. <laughs> debate about necrophilia? Mothers who maim? She's totally full of it. All right, look, uh, thank you very much for your history lesson, and thank you for your the unsolicited news? advice. Check this. Hey, are we interrupting something? No, hey, what's up? The, the petition. 325 signatures. Well, we got students and teachers and custodians and the lunchroom everybody, staff. Everybody, everybody thinks that you got shafted. Yeah, here, read it. Um, we, the undersigned, respectfully request that the Pine Valley School Board apologize to Mr. Michael Delaney and reinstate him as a teacher immediately. I personally wanted to go with, like, yesterday, but Kev made us stick with it immediately. You were a part of this, Kev? Yeah, 325 of us are, and this is only two days of trying. Well, Michael, that's fantastic. That's grassroots support. It's even more reason to publicize your case, right, Jason? Well, more people under 18 tend to be a little more tolerant and liberal than others. <sighs> Thank you very much for your input, Jason. As for you guys, how about a burger and a milkshake on me? Okay, but you got to promise me that you're going to go home and do your homework and not collect any more of those signatures, all right? Okay, it's a deal. I'm starving. Excellent. Yeah, me too. Call me later, okay? Stop by. And as for you, think about your proposition. Come on here. Jason, would you please go into the kitchen and call Iris and tell her we'll be in shortly? Say goodbye to Dixie. Bye, Dixie. Goodbye. You've certainly got him wrapped around your little finger. Does it bother you? You bother me. Oh. Is this bad mood because you haven't kissed and made up with your husband? Did I say something? It might have uh, struck you the wrong way. I mean, have you talked to him? Have you resolved your domestic unrest? You know, Liza, there are some people that you'd really... Oh, you'd like to sit down with, really let your hair down with and, and talk to. But you're not one of them. Oh, well, things are still rocky. That's really too bad. Mm. Have a terrible day.
You're practically letting life run your life. What's your problem? It's just a job, Dixie. <laughs> Listen, I have some bad news. It's your job to be her toady, I see. <laughs> How could you stand her? Sorry. What's the bad news? It's about her. L I miss Colby. When is Tad due back? Tomorrow. Why? I thought so. Ms. Colby made me cancel all of her plans for today and tomorrow, and she left town, but she wouldn't say where she was going. Three guesses, and the first two don't count. Who's there? Tad the Ripper. 